Welcome, everyone. If you can give me your attention, I'll get through the one of the most wonderful days in St. Joseph's history, maybe. <laughs> I'm glad to be a part of it. My name is Ellis Cross, and this is the Frank Summers home, known as the Cracker House. You are at the Cracker House Project. And uh, if you don't know that history, you're going to hear it pretty soon. I'd like to welcome the Missouri Preservation Group today. They're going to be announcing they're most endangered for the state of Missouri. Uh, Karen Bodie Baxter is here, the president. Just kind of, yeah, there you go. Raise your hand as you go. Holly Peterson, board member. Holly's here, all right. Uh, Penny Pittman. There, there's Penny. Uh, she's the chair of the most endangered uh, committee for the state of Missouri. Bill Hart here, uh, field manager. And Ruth Kanoy, uh, the Landmark Association of St. Louis. She's right there. All right. Today with us also we have dignitaries from the city of St. Joseph. Bruce Wood is here, city manager. Would you raise your hand, please? Thank you, sir. Uh, Barbara Labass, city council member, is here. Donna Jean Boyer, another city council member. Thank you, Donna Jean. Uh, Byron Myers is here. There in the blue coat. Uh, Joyce Starr is here also. There's Joyce. Yes. Uh, we have several sponsors that we want to thank. Our bank, first of all, Midwest Federal Bank. Uh, also, Caroline Petrie has donated some of her books for today's event. Um, Johnson Control, that's, uh, they're, they're donating one of their employees to do a videography of this. <laughs> Mr. Neal's here, Brandon Neal. Uh, so thank you, Johnson Control, for giving him the day off. First Baptist Church is involved today. Housing Solutions Property Management is also a sponsor today. Uh, Joanne Gray helped us with setting up the thing, so we really want to thank her. And let's just have a round of applause for all these wonderful people. Now I need to introduce a lady that didn't let, didn't let this property go down. Uh, it was scheduled for demolition. It got very close to demolition. Uh, she went to the demolition hearing and begged and pleaded for the property. We've gone through a lot of hoops trying to get the property secure. We're still going through those things. Uh, we really believe we're going to have a wonderful project here. I'm uh, vice president or treasurer or whatever of this group, this Cracker House project. And the president I'd like to introduce is Jennifer Higgs, the lady that got this thing going. Thank you very much, all of you, for showing up and uh, showing your support for historic preservation here in St. Joseph. Uh, this project is uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, my husband and I wanted to purchase this home many years ago, and unfortunately, uh, there was just too many obstacles. Uh, it has been in a demolition meeting twice, and each time I've stepped up as a citizen and preservationist of this community. And I am proud to say that the Cracker House Project organization has gotten further than any other organization uh, so far. Uh, we are almost ready to take possession of the property, and we have an amazing history here, and we cannot allow our history to be uh, demolished and taken away to a dump. Uh, I believe that Frank Summers' contribution to America, America's industry, and to our city and to our state is so important that whatever it takes to make this project come to fruition, we must do that. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Bill Hart, the field manager of Missouri Preservation. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, folks, for letting us be here today. Uh, again, I represent Missouri Preservation, formerly known as the Missouri Alliance for Historic Preservation. Uh, as our, we do basically three focuses in our preservation activities statewide. We are we are a nonprofit, membership-based organization. I do have I have to sinfully promote my organization. We do have membership brochures. I wish you would pick one up here on the table. I'm also gonna today. I'm gonna go over the entire list of his, of endangered historic places for Missouri. Uh, but there are also there are two booklets on the table here that show you all of the in detail uh, with a description of all of the most endangered historic places on our list today. Um, so our 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 uh, focus is basically three pronged. It's educational, 
We provide workshops. Um, our, our biggest educational workshop is at, uh, Historic Preservation Equals Economic Development. Uh, we also host an annual statewide preservation conference this year to be held in University City. We moved to a different location, a different town in Missouri. We have been here in St. Joe. Um, our chief recognition program is our preserv statewide preservation honor awards, which we just bestowed. It, it's uh, an annual celebration at the Capitol and the Capitol Rotunda. We just had it March 24th was our an formal announcement. We recognize 15 uh, people, projects, and places that have made a difference in historic preservation. And then our third approach is advocacy, and our chief advocacy program is our most endangered historic places. The most endangered historic places program started out as basically a media campaign aimed at calling attention to endangered historic resources throughout Missouri. Uh, under our past couple of uh, chairs, we've expanded our outreach and mission uh, to not only uh, put it in the newspaper for one day, we also provide staff support and board support to each one of our most endangered historic sites. So uh, we're not going away, uh, but let's put it that way. Um, so without, without uh, one other announcement, if there is media here, I do, have, um, I do have the press release and the information on Jump Drive for you. So um, be sure to get that for me after the program. The first one of our most endangered is, obviously, the Frank L. Summer House here at 914 Main Street in St. Joe. This Italianate-style home was built in 1882, just a few blocks north of Frank Summer's Bakery. The saltine cracker is known to have been created at this bakery, earning the house its local moniker, the Cracker House. Mr. Summer's Bakery, the American Biscuit Company, later merged with the New York Biscuit Company to become National Biscuit Company, now known as Nabisco. Nabisco now makes more than 35 billion crackers each year, enough to circle the equator 44 times. The Cracker House has been vacant for a number of years and has suffered greatly from neglect. It's, cur it's currently owned by an absentee landlord, and the property is on the St. Joseph's endangered property list or dangerous properties list. A local nonprofit group, the Cracker House Project, is hopeful that they can gain ownership of this historic home and renovate it as a house museum and for other public use. Our second endangered property is the Triple A building, which is in St. Louis City. It's at 3917 Linda Boulevard. The American Automobile Association, or Triple A building, is an oval-shaped colonnaded building in a modern classical style referred to as New Formalist. Desi designed by architect W.A. Sarmiento in 1976, all of these modern properties are coming of age, uh, the building has not yet reached a 50-year age criteria for listing on the National Register of Historic Places, though. In the absence of a completed survey of modern architecture in St. Louis, it has not been identified as potentially eligible for historic listing, and therefore the building is not subject to demolition review. Even though St. Louis's mayor has supported the preservation of this iconic building in the city's west end, the Planning Commission gave approval by a 5-3 to three vote to allow the developer to demolish the building and clear the site for a CVS drugstore. It's hoped that the most endangered listing will encourage CVS there to use its existing building for its drugstore operation or construct a new building elsewhere. Our third most endangered historic place is the Lyric Theater at 117 First Street in Newburgh in Phelps County. Originally named the Community Theater, the Lyric opened in 1919 exclusively offering live performances then switched to a combination of live theater and movies before it closed in 1957. In 1983, it was purchased by J.D. Turley and again became a live theater venue. It was purchased, it was purchased later by the Regional Op Opera Company, or ROC, and this group has presented live performances during every summer season since then. The ROC is a volunteer group, and the only money collected for upkeep of the building has been from donations taken at the door. Storms on leap day of this year 
have caused damage to the building and without funds for repairs needed immediately, the local company announced that it cannot hold performances there in 2012. It is hoped the Lyric Theater can find supportive financial friends through its most endangered listing and return to a place of entertainment and pride for the Newburgh community. We have two categorical listings on our most endangered list this year. The first is Barnes of Missouri statewide, including the state hospital barns in Fulton, Callaway County. According, according to the most recent U.S. Census of Agriculture, the state of Missouri ranked number two in the number of historic barns with over 35,000 barns reported built before 1960. Due to a variety of factors, including urbanization, new farming and building practices, and the ability, inability of farmers to, complete, to compete with large agribusiness, we are losing barns and farmsteads at an alarming rate. Farm Aid estimates that 330 farmers leave the business each year in America, or each week, I'm sorry, in America. Without a new purpose, empty barns suffer from lack of maintenance, which leads to rapid deterioration. The two barns used here as examples were once used for sustenance farming at the State Hospital in Fulton. With no clear purpose, these unique structures are the first to suffer from neglect. It is hoped that this listing will help find a new purpose for many barns such as these and that efforts can be stepped up to ensure the basic historic documentation of tens of thousands of Missouri farms and their barns before many are lost. The next most endangered Missouri uh, historic place of Missouri is the Pouncey Building at 1505 East 18th Street in Kansas City, Jackson County. The Pouncey Building is a 1909 two-story brick commercial building in the heart of Kansas City's 18th and Vine Jazz Historic District. This is one of the few remaining original office buildings in the district and is significant in its association with the social history of the district in that it was the first office of the city's first African-American female lawyer, Leona Pouncey Thurman, who moved her office to this building in 1955. Missouri Preservation has been made aware that the city of Kansas City intends to move forward with demolition in anticipation of the All-Star Baseball game in July 2012. The building is on the main strip of the Jazz District and in close proximity to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. It is currently on the dangerous building list in Kansas City. Although the National Register of Historic Places uh, it, it is on the National Register and is subject to 106 review. It's feared that the city desires to fast track the demolition as they are concerned about codes and safety and the image of blight and, in the city in light of the upcoming baseball game. Listing on Missouri's most endangered historic places will hopefully bring additional interest and awareness to this building and to find a buyer who can rehab the building and there, since there has been an interest in the past and the building is currently for sale. Our next building is a mid-century modern building located in Villa Ridge in Franklin County at 100 Old Highway 100, the Diamonds Restaurant. This art modern restaurant building was conducted along, was constructed along Route, historic Route 66 in 1950, replacing an early Diamonds restaurant which had burned in 1949. In rebuilding the diamonds, the owner created a state-of-the-art restaurant with a stream, streamlined north wing and added another purpose to the site, constructing the adjoining, uh, in the adjoining north wing a truck stop with sleeping rooms and showers, a, ver a very modern innovation for its time. The diamonds advertising postcard from 1960 called it the world's largest roadside restaurant serving over a million people each year. When Interstate 44 was constructed during the 1960s, the Diamonds was moved to a new building along the new roadway, about two miles northeast of the original site. The vacated building continued to operate as a restaurant, but under new name and new ownership before finally closing several years ago. Although suffering from lack of maintenance, the original 1950 building still stands as a Route 66 roadside icon. Its current it's currently for sale, and its owner is committed to, the list, to list the building on the National Register of Historic Places, making it eligible for the state's historic 
preservation tax credits, and it is hoped that the listing will attract a new owner interested in renovation of this historic and extraordinary property. The next most endangered historic place is the Kemper Arena at 1800 Genesee in Kansas City, Jackson County. In 1972, the city of Kansas City selected the Chicago architecture firm of C.F. Murphy Associates to design a state-of-the-art arena on the, groups of the, on the uh, grounds of the Kansas City stockyards. With this in charge, Helmut John, the director of their planning and design and development, created an innovative solution to sup suspend the roof from a monumental steel trusses located on the outside of the building, eliminating the need for interior columns. Opened in 1974, the 19,000-seat Kemper Auditorium was one of the first examples of high-tech architecture known as structural expre expressionism to be constructed in North America. The building stands today as a seminal example of this style. Uh, the, the, a new arena, uh, that actually, uh, in the last couple of years, the Sprint Center opened, and the new arena uh, replaced Kemper as the city's premier event venue. Unfortunately, the building is quickly falling into disrepair from neglect. In October 2011, a local plan was revealed to replace the arena with a new 5,000-seat agricultural event center for the American Royal Farm Show. It is hoped that this listing will inspire greater recognition of Kemper Arena's importance architecturally, as well as its great potential for a repurposed community asset. The next most endangered historic place is the Charles and Betty Birthright House at 109 Main Street in Clarkton, Dunklin County, which is in the boot heel. For more than 40 years, this house was home to Charles and Betty Birthright, former slaves who achieved economic independence and prosperity while building close ties with the families that held them in, had held them in slavery and the predominantly white citizen, citizenry of Clarkton and Dunklin County. From modest beginnings, this barber and seamstress amassed substantial wealth from highly successful commercial and farming operations. In 1901, Charles was among a group men cited in the local press as contributing to Dunklin County's greatness. The couple used their growing wealth to benefit the community, investing in its economic development and donating funds to construct the 1884 and 1911 Clarkton School Buildings. After their death, their estate went to Stillman Institute, now Stillman College, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama constituting the single largest charitable contribution to the college until the 1980s. A building on campus, Birthright Auditorium, is named in their honor. Though not civil rights activists in the common definition of the phrase, the couple's economic and civic contributions to Clarkton and Dunklin, Dunklin County helped to contradict the popular image of blacks as indolent, undisciplined, and worthy of full rights of American citizens. The birthrights represent an aspect of history rarely studied in Missouri or the United States. African Americans who were well respected and accepted members of the larger white community during a period when race, racism was the social norm. The house has suffered from extensive termite damage as well as structural problems from seismic activity this past year. The Clarkton Historical Society feels that this listing will allow the public the opportunity to learn the importance of Charles and Betty Birthright's contribution and that their story will be able to reach an audience of supporters that are dedicated to the support of the home and the development of the site into an interpretive site for educational purposes. Our last most endangered historic place and our second categorical listing is for school buildings of Missouri statewide, including the Milton Moore School in Kansas City, the Central Elementary School in Boonville, Cooper County, and the Lyons School in the city of St. Louis. Due to increased, urbanis due to increased suburbanization in Missouri, many inner, inner city schools have been closed due to dwindling enrollments. Between the state's two largest urban districts, Kansas City and St. Louis, 
there are currently over 70 empty school buildings. Although many of the Kansas City school buildings are designed by noted architects like Charles Ashley Smith, and many of the St. Louis schools designed by the world-renowned William B. Itner, many of these buildings are in neighborhoods struggling with the effects of long-term disinvestment. Lack of available financing makes adaptive reuse projects challenging. Similarly, in our rural school buildings, we also find endangered resources. As more of our state's population moves from rural areas to the new suburbs, we have uh, many school many school <coughs> districts have been consolidating, uh, sometimes to rein in the cost of property maintenance. Some communities feel that a vacant lot is better than a vacant building, and many school districts cannot afford the cost of upkeep. This makes demolition likely if reuse plans cannot be identified and encouraged. Some empty school buildings of Missouri have found new purposes, including municipal offices, condominiums, and affordable housing, especially for senior citizens. It is hoped that this listing will call attention to these many endangered historic resources and encourage reuse and repurposing of many more of Missouri's empty school buildings. There is one thing I'd like to tag on to the end of our announcement, and that is uh, we received not one, but two nominations for one of our most endangered historic places, which we actually were not able to list, because as soon as the committee came out of its meeting, we discovered that the Leaper Hotel building in Chillicothe was already already being demolished. They had already started demolition the day before. So uh, it, it breaks our heart that we can't be there at least once ahead of the curve to try and put into effect some mechanism for saving historic buildings here in Missouri. Um, I, I wanted to also add that there uh, that, that the, the group here, the Cracker House Project, has a, I'm not going to call it a cookie jar, but we'll call it a cracker jar over here, if anybody wants to, con to contribute to their uh, project here. Uh, there is one other list that I want to um, advertise. We had so many uh, great nominations this year from across the state uh, that we came up with an entirely new list of most endangered historic places which is contrary to what we had been doing because uh, several of our other uh, places we, we don't consider out of the woods yet. Uh, so we uh, decided to promote them uh, as a watched properties list. And I'll briefly just announce the, the properties that were held over on a watched properties list from 2011. They're the Jefferson School, a traditionally African-American school in Cape Girardeau County. Historic bridges of Missouri, including the Riverside Bridge in Christian County and the Route 66 Bridge in St. Louis County. The former Missouri State Penitentiary Complex in Jefferson City, Cole County. The Wheatley Provident Hospital Building in Kansas City, Jackson County. The Lexington Municipal, the Lexington Municipal Auditorium in Lexington, Lafayette County the Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church in Lafayette County, the St. Louis Iron Mountain and Southern Railroad Depot in Fredericktown, Madison County, the Russell Hotel in Charleston, Mississippi County, the Delmo Community Center in, Pem in Pemiscot County, the Rock Mechanics Laboratory, uh, which is also known as the former Missouri Tracoma Hospital Building on the campus of ms and in Rolla, Phelps County. Uh, I, I appreciate your, uh, your indulgence. I appreciate you, uh, everyone's interest in historic preservation and trying to save buildings, places, as the sign says, places that matter to Missourians. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here today, and best of luck here at the Cracker House. I'd just like to say that in historic preservation, we must first take an inventory of what we have and identify what is important to our community, our heritage, and our American history. It's very important that we, we have an inventory of those most important structures so that they don't get to the point like the Cracker House here. Uh, it is never too late to stop it. And I ask that all of you support all projects in preservation in our community. 
because when we save our history, it gives our community a sense of pride and a sense of belonging. And it's very important that we make that effort because once it's gone, it is almost impossible to get back. I'd like to thank you all so much for coming. It means a lot to all of us here at the uh, Cracker House Project. Thank you so much.